The Chet Baker trumpet is capable of both powerful and restrained expression. There is restraint in the Chet Baker interpretation of Gordon Jenkins' Goodbye. Goodbye, a quiet performance by Chet Baker, who is actually a quiet sort of person. I don't believe that he is ever anxious to speak about himself, preferring to speak through his music, but we have asked him to say a word or two to you, and perhaps the best way to get him to, to speak is to ask a blunt question. Is that right, Chet? That ought to do it. All right. Since you uh, sing as well as play trumpet, let me ask what may be a silly question. Do you ever think of yourself as a trumpeter who sings or as a singer who plays trumpet? Well, I think of myself as a trumpeter who sings, but uh, recently a lot of people have been thinking uh, that they like the singing better than the trumpet playing, so I don't know what to think now. <laughs> it's interesting how many of our front-rank instrumentalists have become singers. Nat Cole, Louis Armstrong, Sarah Vaughan, Billy Eckstein. I suppose if you have a, a sense of musical expression, you're able to express it in almost any one of several ways. Well, it's a way of getting, it's another, it's an approach to a different audience than you, than you have by just playing the trumpet, I think. It, uh, increases your appeal. Well, of course, the lyrics of a song, naturally, will have a, uh, uh, an appeal content for some people that the straight melodic line itself might lack. That's right. Uh, with a vocal tune there, they'll hear something that, uh, that they've heard before, and, uh, I think they like that a lot better a lot of times than, than hearing someone improvise on a, on a tune that they, they're not too familiar with anyway. Well, speaking of improvisation, Chet, I understand that you are a self-taught musician, is that right? That's right. Would uh, you say that you are uh, uninfluenced by other musicians? No, or? I wouldn't say that. Uh, I've been influenced more recently, and that is within the last two or three years, than than any time before that. Uh, been influenced by Miles Davis a lot. I like Miles, he's my favorite trumpet player. And uh, of course I've been playing with Russ now for a long time and he's a, a big influence, would have to be. His conception is so modern and uh, unusual, the lines that he, he thinks out. I used to play when I was in the Army in 1951 in San Francisco. I'd make it into town every night and play with the jazz clubs with Dexter Gordon uh, when he was around and uh, Wardell Gray. I understand that you worked early with Charlie Parker, who praised you and recommended you to the other musicians out there. Who are some of the other outstanding young men of music that you've seen and heard? Well, I ran into a, a trumpet player, Chet Baker, in California about two, three months ago. Oh, yes. He do, has done some sides with uh, Jerry Mulligan, hasn't he? That's right. That's he. I did work a while with Charlie uh, prior to going to work with Jerry Mulligan. A few months before, I went to work with Jerry. I worked a few weeks with Bird, and before that, I was working with Vito for a while on the West Coast. First band I ever worked with was Freddie Schnickelfritz Fisher. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps uh, the cool approach to, uh, approach to music has been some sort of a reaction <laughs> to the Schnickelfritz Fisher style of playing. I'd like to play a, a record that you made, I believe this was your, recorded at your first session as leader of your own quartet with uh, Chet Baker, uh, I mean with Russ Freeman at the piano in accompaniment, is that right? That's right, Willis. Chet Baker Quartet, Made in Mexico. Made in Mexico, the Chet Baker Quartet, with Russ Freeman at the piano, on the Voice of America Jazz Hour. 
Chet, uh, in your opinion, what has been your most significant contribution to the to the development of jazz interest? Well, <clears throat> in my opinion, that's uh, in my opinion uh, the phrasing that uh, that I use that I try to invent on the different tunes that you, you hear me play. That uh, I try to in <clears throat> invent a different and a different line to phrase it differently than than anyone has, has heard it before. It's the phrasing is the whole the whole thing, and and the attack and accents which make the, the tune swing, and the counterpoint that's used between Russ and I on some things were very interesting. The lines moving apart and together and intermingling. It's a lot of fun to play that way. I don't know whether it's any great contribution because it's certainly probably certainly been done before by other musicians. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, counterpoint, the counterpuntal texture in music was used by Bach and Palestrina, uh, Palestrina and Hindemith, but uh, too few musicians, except in recent years, have introduced the uh, counterpuntal or polyphonic structure to jazz, and you, as first became evident when you worked with the Jerry Mulligan Quartet, certainly have furthered the development of interest in uh, contrapuntal lines in jazz. I I'm particularly interested in, in uh, a recording which your pianist Russ Freeman made with drummer Shelley Mann, an unusual sort of combination. Uh, have you... Uh, heard Russ speak of his reaction to what came out of that session? Well, <clears throat> you only get praise from, from Russ about Shelley anytime. Shelley is uh, Russ's drummer, and uh, they play very well together, and after they've been playing together for a short time, it's uh, amazing the things that they, that they get coming out spontaneous, complete spon spontaneity. Well, let's listen to Russ Freeman at the piano apart from the Chet Baker Quartet for the moment, with Shelley Mann on drums. Just the two of them playing Charlie Parker's Billy's Bounce. Charlie Parker's Billy's Bounce from The Voice of America, played by Shelley Mann and Russ Freeman, who is now pianist with the Chet Baker Quartet. Chet, of all the records you've made, which ones do you like best? Well, I like uh, the things that I made with Jerry on uh, Pacific Jazz and Fantasy. And I like a few of the things I made with Columbia on Strings. But I think the best examples of uh, my improvising with... Uh, written background ensemble were with Jerry's Tintet uh, on Capitol label. We get a lot of guys that uh, think that those solos were written out because they fit so well with the background that was written. They refuse to believe that uh, it was improvised. But uh, I like those and I like uh, B's Flat, which is a tune Russ wrote. Uh, it's one of our recordings on Pacific Jazz. I like most of Russ's tunes. They're fun and swing. I think per perhaps the, the record which uh, caused the greatest initial comment about you was the one that you made as a member of the Jerry Mulligan Quartet on the song My Funny Valentine. And uh, in the time that remains, Chet, uh, I'd like to first thank you for being with us as we've played your records. Uh, invite you to return when you can, and uh, say goodbye and good luck until next time. Thank you, Willis, for inviting me over. Here is Chet Baker singing, this time, My Funny Valentine. My Funny Valentine. That was Chet Baker, and this has been Music USA. <laughs> The Voice of America invites you to listen again tomorrow at this time. Willis Conover speaking from Washington, D.C. This program has come to you from the United States of America.